Hello, everyone. Welcome to part two of Innovating from a Distance. Do we need to be together to create? In other words, does creativity and innovation um, need us to be together? How can we do it from a distance? And how can creativity help us be well and, and live uh, better? So without further ado, Marie-Josée Leroux, who happens to be a colleague of mine at Humans, um, and she is an amazing innovator and leader in the field of creativity and innovation, uh, is here to have a conversation again. Hello, MJ. Hi, Laura. So nice to be here with you. It is my pleasure. So my first question is about the pandemic. How has the pandemic positively or negatively impacted creativity and innovation in workplaces? It's a very good question. And I think it depends. It's There's not just one answer, right? Because for some people, they really took the time, like when their business were down. It was actually the case of my business. At the beginning of the pandemic, I was I, usually running like an event uh, in, in person, right? Uh, and then I needed to to reinvent myself. And it's when we discovered like a Zoom, it was quite new for us at the time, but we realized that we were able to, to do those uh, meeting or those session or those training online. And we convinced a first client and then a second one. And then we end up like doubling the size of our business in like less than a year, right? So, I mean, that was a very positive impact. So I was very fortunate, but I also took the time to reflect and take the opportunity to think differently. So I think all the companies that did that, that looked at what was there, what were the, what was the need around them, and that uh, were able to react, they did very well, right? I think for the, the company that tried to stay like and continue to do like they were used to, it was harder for them, right? And all those people that kept on saying for two years, I can't wait for us to be like like before. Well, I think we will never be like before, right? That really transformed us and how we work, right? You probably saw it also on your side. Absolutely. I, I've seen, you know, some leaders hanging on to the way it was before. And we have to think back to, okay, what was life like in 2019? And was it all great? I mean, was it great that everyone had to commute every day, for example, to work in, in offices? Um, was that the best way to work and, and live on a, on a full-time basis? So it's a question that I think a lot of organizations I know are exploring because we're talking to a lot of organizations about that and the future of work. But I would agree with you, organizations that have pivoted their thinking and adapted some of them are doing better than ever oh, yeah for sure right yeah, agility and and i think yeah. one one good trick could also be to be a good observer of what's going on and to to be able to anticipate what could or what will happen right um, and that you kind of need that sense that we rarely talk about in business but that intuition that capacity right to be present to that level where you kind of feel and sense where things are going, right? Um, yes, and I like that word intuition. And I think intuition is very important. And we know that there is a gut brain, right, with neurons in our in our gut, and we need to trust that. But I think people who are very logical in nature, they, they see that as fluffy and not wise to trust. Would you agree? Yeah. It was so beautiful. One day I was teaching a class um, and one manager of a marketing department was there with a person in his team and the girl's name was Cynthia. And he said, you know what, MJ? Now we trust Cynthia's intuition all the time because we've learned over the years that every time we don't, because we're afraid of this, we don't know, da, da, da like it was an error like it was a big mistake not to like follow Cynthia's intuition so now we listen to Cynthia's intuition if if she says I'm not too sure why but we should do it this way I really feel it it's extremely strong he was like okay let's do it <laughs> so I was so happy <laughs> to hear like a manager express that in front of the group for me that was extremely powerful and yeah things are changing so fast right now that 
I think we need to develop that more and to learn, like, to trust not only the intuition, just the gut feeling, but this is accumulation of all those years of experience, right? Cumulated with that impression and that feeling and that, um, in French, we say ressenti, but the gut feeling, I guess we, sh we should say. So how could we use that more at work? I would love to see that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to do that myself because I think I do have a strong intuition, but don't always trust it or try to make excuses. Or um, when you use your intuition, you never know. How, well, how would it have turned out otherwise? I don't. You, you never yes, know, so really, true. right? Yeah. So it's just. Um, so it's it's tricky that way, but I think it's so powerful. Um, so MJ, how does creativity improve our wellness? And how can we use creativity to be more well as human beings? Mm. I feel it's a circle. I feel that um, creativity allow us to express, like, let, let's say I take it in a personal uh, way. Let's say in my life, I like to write a lot. You will love this one. Let me reach out to this book. I have a book here where I can <laughs> look at this cover. <laughs> so bad book, trash, blah, blah, blah. In this book, I am allowed to write like all kinds of things that are not pretty. <laughs> so I can really let it go. And, you know, so when I have lots of emotion, I take the time to write down. And here I, I was inspired. So I did something that was not pretty, but, but it turned out to be pretty, right? So how can we learn to let go of those emotions that are in the way of our creativity or that are present in order to lead us into creating something new. And that for our wellness, when I do this personally, I feel much better. Like when I feel I have lots of emotion and I just paint it down and write it down and I'm allowed to create something like that is not pretty. <laughs> um, it really helps me to like create some new space, a bit like creating a new white page, right? And the more we mm -hmm. are able to create that, the better we feel, because it's like a reset. So for me, I see that as a loop. The more we are able to come back to white, come back to that neutral place or to that place where we feel well, then there is some space for creating something new, right? But emptying, like, I don't want to call it, let's call it the trash or the things that are either emotion or tension. And we live that, like, personally, even though I do a lot of personal work, um, I felt that the last two years was so hard. Like, how many times I needed to, like, release some of the things that were not even mine sometimes, but just pressure from everyone else, feeling lots of fear and lots of tension. So... After I was able to release that, then I was able to create some new space. Um, and that for me is one way I come back to that wellness and to that space where I feel better. And I believe if we are able to take care of that, we improve our life. We improve the life of people around us because the better we are, the better we feel, um, like the more we can contribute to creating that world we want to live in, right? Exactly, exactly. And I think creativity, I mean, you have that that book where you, you put it out there in, you know, words, but also in, in art, right? So what are other ways that people can, you know, unleash their emotions in creative ways that maybe aren't art or like what uh, what comes to mind because yeah. we're all different of right course, we're all different and some people need to do it through exercise it could be through dance to mm -hmm. martial art to running but the more we use our body i mean at Cirque du Soleil we saw that totally right the use of the body and to experiment like when we create a show at Cirque du Soleil we know what the feeling we want, we know the image in general, but we don't know in details what it's gonna become, right? So we're really searching with the people, with them experimenting, exploring, discovering, working with a specific apparatus, like what could be the result if we do it this way or that way, or sometimes we expect, especially in our work life, 
that we will experiment five minutes and find the most brilliant idea, <laughs> the most innovative idea <laughs> that never existed. It's not true. It's tr like we need to try and experiment a lot more than that. And sometimes it's after 100 bad ideas that the good one comes, right? <laughs> so if you always pick the first one, yeah, maybe you're a bit faster. But for me, it's a bit like putting a Band-Aid, right? Over like, you hurt yourself, you put a Band-Aid. Well, if you keep on hurting yourself the same way, go fix the fence where you hurt yourself every day, right? Instead of just like using Band-Aid. So, yeah. So how can we learn to give ourselves more space to experiment? And I believe because now, especially when we work from home, we move less and less. So how can we reintegrate movement into our life? I encourage people to go walk outside. That's an easy one, but it could be to run. It could be to do anything else. And that again, releases tension in order to allow you to have that new fresh space in your mind and in your heart in order to create. Does that make sense? I love it. Yeah, it absolutely makes sense. Now, how can organizations, you know, so those of us who are, are working for an organization, what role can the organization or leader play in encouraging um, space for creativity um, to improve our wellness? Mm -hmm. Well, it could be as simple as uh, doing a quick um icebreaker at the beginning of a meeting. So sometimes just taking that time where you allow everyone to just give one word, it could be like, okay, in one word, what's your feeling today? <laughs> give me on the level of zero to 10, what's your feeling? And try to be creative with that. Like uh, if you would be a car today, which kind of car would you be? <laughs> and uh, if you are an animal, anything, just so people connect with how, who they are, how they feel, and they bring something on the table that can after be reused into a brainstorm. And I like to connect those icebreaker with um, whatever we're looking for in that meeting. So if you're doing a meeting and you want to reflect on how are we going to collaborate better, like now that we have to work for some of us online, some of, of us in presence, how are we going to do it, right? So it could be, okay, talk to me about what is the place where you feel the most creative? Uh, with, with, what time of the day do you feel the most creative, right? So the more we know about our people, the more we discover who they are, that also gives us insight on how and when we can use them. Like if you know a person is extremely creative in the morning and you want them to have the most brilliant idea they've never had, well, ask them in the morning, right? Uh, or don't force them to work on it at five o'clock when they have kids and they just want to go home, right? Because it wouldn't be very creative. Yeah, all very, very good points. We're all wired differently when it comes to when we're creative and how we're creative Absolutely. is what I'm hearing. And to allow space for people to be creative and encourage it. And I love the check in and we sometimes use the weather analogy. What's your internal weather today? Yeah. Um, and that really opens up dialogue again through analogy. I think analogies are so powerful. For sure they are. Yeah. <laughs> now, what? let's talk a bit about you, um, MJ, because I think you do a great job in role modeling this. I mean, even for me, I've, I've learned from, you know, seeing how you work, from your, you know, book idea, all your different colored pens <laughs> that I saw in Montreal. Like, just, I mean, the, you're just such a creative spirit. But I know that you're also a human being and a, a busy consultant. <laughs> and how do you, what, what has been your greatest challenge when it comes to your own work-life wellness and how have you worked at overcoming that challenge? I would say over the last two years my challenge my challenge has been really to keep some time for myself because uh, we were very fortunate and lucky to have a lot of work but because of that at some point um, I have a lot of energy so sometimes I push my limit a bit too much so I really needed to be aware to catch myself early enough when I had the first like s signal that, oh, I'm starting to be overworked. So I do a lot of acupuncture. Um, the, is it the same word in English? Acupuncture? Yeah, absolutely. Acupuncture. Yeah. Um, that really helps me to release tension. I practice yoga. Um, 
at my best, I love to practice three times a week, but sometimes it was just one time a week. But I have the chance also to have a little dog. So I go outside and take lots of small walk. But every time I have a break, I need to bring her out. So because I do that, I think it helps me to keep and stay fresh with my way of thinking. And then I try to do lots of small sessions of exercise where I do rotation of all my articulation, just so I keep my body mobile. Uh, I realize that, you know, we tend to just be like one like one direction, always looking forward, sitting on a chair. So now I bring my desk up. You can see I'm standing right now. I also have like a big balloon, like a balloon that I can sit on. So I try to variate like the position I am sitting on um, in order to like, um, yeah, move my body differently. I drink a lot of water. I eat well. I never compromise on lunch. Like people try to book me, oh yeah, we'll do over lunch. No. <laughs> At lunch, I eat <laughs> good food, biologic food. And uh, I try to also spare my morning. So I follow my rhythm. Like some people are good to start very early, but they need to finish at a certain time. For my own rhythm, it's easier to go like a bit longer at night at time. But I try to really follow my rhythm and eat well, take lots of vitamins. <laughs> um, good. I would say. No, this is all very, very good to to hear and, and just learn from you. Um, so I always like to share with our listeners and viewers uh, a book that you recommend. You've already recommended one earlier, which we'll post in the show notes and put in our, our blog and newsletter. But any other book that you'd recommend and a podcast to help people learn more about creativity and innovation in their lives, incorporating more of it? I love books. So let's say, because a lot of people are from the business world, creativity in business. A very good book um, from Igor Bitebier and Raymond Vollings. Uh, I'm sorry for the pronunciation. But in this book, you'll find a lot of tips and tricks on how to uh, boost ideas and creativity, how to run workshop, generate ideas, um, and how to start implementing it. So it's a very good book to learn to run different sessions, right? And to have ideas. So a very good one. One that is more personal, I would say, but that's one that I, it's okay if I give more than one. Absolutely, yeah. The Artist Way, it's, it's an old book from Julia Cameron, but this one is more personal. It's, um, it encourages you to write down every morning to take the time to just write down and release a bit like what I'm doing in my bad book <laughs> and just to write down everything. It also encourages you to take artist date with yourself where you go visit a museum, where you go for a walk, where you do something just to enhance creativity and, and to develop the curiosity. Uh, another one that is more business, reinventing organization. Here I have the illustrated uh, book. So lots of nice visual in there that it helps you to reflect on how we can reorganize business. So our organization are at the next level, right? Um, so lots of great inspiration. Perfect. Now those are great recommendations. I mean, I think um, that that's more than enough. If you have one podcast to share, please do, but no I'm, pressure. I'm not so much on podcast, like um, I'm more on books. <laughs> Other than mine, right? Yeah, exa exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so if you didn't need to sleep and could use that extra time to do whatever else you wanted to do, what would it be? I would add to your question if I had all the money in the world. <laughs> okay. I would um, set up a place in the forest where I could invite groups of people to come and to slow down their rhythm, to experiment and how to ground their, themselves with nature again and to start to brainstorm and create um, the new world of tomorrow in that space. So, but in connection with nature, with their own nature, but also with Mother Earth. So that's what I would say. Beautiful. 
Final question. What's the call to action that you want to leave people with today to make the world a, a better place when it comes to innovation and creativity? Mm-hmm. I love that phrase from Gandhi that says, become the change that you want to see in the world. And I think we're right now just standing or sitting exactly in this moment where I believe we are so powerful and we can, we have the power to be so creative. And sometimes we diminish that. So my encouragement would be as a leader, become that change, become what you want to see and encourage everyone around you to do the same. I think if we just put all of our strength and creativity and alignment together, we have so much power to create a place where peace can be present creativity and doing things differently, but really in that peaceful and loving spirit. That's my dearest wish for us and the world. What a beautiful way to end. Thank you so much, MJ, for being on this show. I think you've added a lot of beautiful insights. Um, How did you find our conversation? Oh, I love it. I was waiting like for it. Like I couldn't wait. I'm so happy we took the time. So thank you so much, Lara, for your invitation. My pleasure. So innovating from a distance, I think the answer is uh, we can create whether we're together or whether we're apart. Creativity and innovation is key to business and to our own wellness. So those are the key messages. Uh, If you like this episode, please share it with others. I have a monthly newsletter full of resources, uh, tips, tricks, articles that I hope you find very useful. If you're not signed up, you can sign up at drlaura.live and please rate and review uh, my podcast. My goal is to share uh, messages and tools around work-life wellness topics at the intersection of work and life. So thank you very much and I hope everybody stays well. Thank you so much for joining us today on Where Work Meets Life. I'm passionate about sharing insights from experts around the world on topics at the intersection of where work meets life. If you found this podcast useful, please share with others who may benefit and engage with us on social media. For more articles, information, and tips, sign up for my monthly newsletter at my website, drlaura.live. This podcast summary contains links to the psychology practice I founded, Work Evolution, Canada Career Counseling, and Synthesis Psychology, as well as my current employer, Humans, a nationwide organizational psychology firm focusing on culture and performance. Stay well.